Lots of people say we should get America working again by buying American products. And there's really no excuse not to buy American because we all know the difference between what's American and what's foreign. Apple pie? American. Kidney pie? Foreign. Football? American. Football? Foreign. Bikini girls? American. Bikini dudes? Definitely foreign. So it's fitting that Spike TV's Bikini Bandits would smash this foreign car. By American, they say, and who wants to argue with Bikini Bay? Not President Obama. The time for talk is over. The time for action is now. There's plenty of action in his $800 billion stimulus package, which includes a Buy American provision designed to get Americans back to work. There you go. It's not. Later on, he gave the Queen of England an iPod, thus continuing his patriotic streak by giving huge publicity to that beloved doodad that's designed in California and sprung from the brain of a guy named Steve. Is there a more American name than Steve? Is there a more American product than the iPod? Shut up and let me go! It's not an American product. Hey! What do you mean the iPod's not American? Almost all of the components inside of that product are made and assembled in foreign countries. He's Professor Donald Boudreau, an economist at George Mason University. He points to this study, which took the iPod apart and figured out where each of the parts comes from. The screen comes from Japan. The battery is from Chile. The CPU design? Well, that was licensed from a British company. And that's just the beginning. All in all, the iPod's 451 parts come from dozens of nations. The iPod itself is assembled in a foreign country. And not just any foreign country. China. Communist China. It's made in China. Something's going on with China. Seems like just about everyone is suspicious of China. So why is the president passing off the commie pod as an all-American product? Instead of buying iPods, maybe patriotic Americans should be smashing them. We hired our own bikini bandits to teach people the truth about the iPod. They're assembled in China, so they get smashed. Maybe the United Steelworkers Union would like to hire these patriotic ladies for its next rally. Every other nation during this economic downturn is directing their stimulus money inward. They're providing jobs in their countries. Even China! The United Steelworkers Union is one of the biggest Buy American backers. Now, if they can do it, why in the hell can't we do it? Actually, we are. Lots of the federal stimulus money is going towards fixing roads, bridges, and the like. With some exceptions, materials like steel that are used for road work must be made in the USA. And it's not just federal law. So I proudly present this to the working people of West Virginia, represented by the labor of West Virginia. At this rally, the governor of West Virginia presented union leaders with a Buy American proclamation. This sort of thing is happening all across the nation. The United Steelworkers Union recently organized a Buy American bus tour that hit 34 cities and culminated with a Washington, D.C. event where business owners and activists learned how to lobby for more protectionist laws. If you use American money, you buy American goods. If you want to sell it here, build it here. And what about those who don't buy American? Obviously, they're uneducated and ignorant people. Even though we are the most productive and most efficient workers in the world, we look at our goods as kind of junk. It's more exotic to have a Volvo rather than a Chevy. This is our truck. But it's more patriotic to have a Chevy. Because if you're an American, it starts here. If you have patriotism, you look at buying American. After looking at those cute American kids and with the U.S. automakers hurting so badly, maybe we should buy American. Chevy, America's brand, supports America's best. You could even use your Chevy to smash some of those traitorous MP3 players. Smash those pods! Then again, let's not take that job from these American ladies. Smash! Smash! smash. Maybe there should be a Buy American law for iPod. Yeah, pull up. No! No, iPods are, are American! Who is that? Whoever it was, he's right. The iPod is American. Sort of. Because the, the idea, the human creativity, 
that makes the iPod a reality, that did originate in America. Yes, plenty of foreigners have jobs thanks to the iPod. And so do 14,000 Americans whose duties include designing and marketing the little buggers. And so, is it American? or not. It's very difficult to tell, actually. Well, maybe the iPod is just a tricky exception. Good thing most other purchases are straightforward, like buying the most patriotic ride available, the Jeep Patriot. That's got to help America. That's nonsense. First of all, the Jeep Patriot, despite its name and despite its label, is actually probably less American than some Toyota products. Turns out that the Patriot's rival, the Toyota Sequoia, is made up of 80% American parts, making it more American than the Patriot, which is only 66% American. American! So what's a patriotic bikini bandit to do? Smash a Patriot? And how can we consumers know we're buying an American car? I think it would be almost impossible. Are you willing to find out where each of your car's parts comes from? And these days, so-called foreign cars are often built in America by Americans. And remember that foreign automaker Volvo? It's more exotic to have a Volvo rather than a Chevy. Well, actually, Volvo's owned by a company called Ford. The categories American-made and foreign-made are really not very useful. We're going to become a force of work and family auditors to make sure the Buy American provisions are being fulfilled. That may be tough. Remember that American steel that's being bought with stimulus dough? Nations like Austria, the Ukraine, and South Africa all have a hand in making American steel. Welcome to the iPod economy, where just about everything is made everywhere. It's literally impossible, uh, at least in any practical sense, to buy American. And yet the buy American idea is so popular. We come together today to insist that taxpayer money, our money, our money, is spent to create jobs here in West Virginia and in America. They look at Americans buying things from foreigners. And what they see then is, oh, the Americans that are not buying things from other Americans, and that's putting some Americans out of work. How terrible. But they don't look at the other half of what's going on. Here's what's going on. Let's say you want to buy a box of throwing stars. You use a $100 bill to buy it from a Chinese company. The $100 bill goes into the company's Chinese bank account. But the only reason the bank accepts the $100 bill is because it knows someone else will want it. One day, a Chinese woman goes to the bank and exchanges Chinese currency for US dollars. There's your $100 bill again. The woman travels to America where she could spend that money on all sorts of things, meals, software, even an iPod. And when foreigners spend those dollars in America, they employ Americans no less than when Americans spend those dollars. You'd think that'd be enough for us to put down our sledgehammers and embrace global trade. That's what these patriotic ladies did when they learned the whole story. Uh, do you think you'll be smashing iPods in the future? No, I think now that we've learned that they're actually a good thing, we'll have to hold back, but uh, I'm glad I got my one shot. Ah, but plenty of folks are still mad that products like the iPod aren't built entirely in America. Unfortunately, some corporation decided it was cheaper to manufacture in another country and ship back, and to me it was unpatriot, and that, that needs to end. I disagree. I mean, first of all, the thing that's most distinctively American is freedom. That free trade stuff, that's a bunch of crap. To insist that you should not be free, Americans should not be free to buy goods from foreigners, that's very anti-American. But what if we passed a new law saying that iPods had to be built entirely in America? Well, that would likely make them so expensive that only people like presidents and queens could afford them. And what would that do to the 14,000 Americans whose jobs depend on the iPod? For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.